Hello and welcome to Tea with Tess, a weekly gathering of women across the world. I'm Tess Yana, co-senior pastor of Link Church and the founder of the Link Sisterhood and Tea with Tess. This moment was created with the hearts to encourage and equip you in your own personal faith journey. As we explore God's Word, I want to encourage you to lean in, subscribe and keep showing up as we go somewhere beautiful together. This is a place where you'll hear from me and some of my special friends that are near to my heart. For more information and resource, why don't you visit teawithtest.com or connect with me on Instagram, Tessiana. They are lifted to the heavens because right now we need a God word. Because the word on, on the earth is not one that's encouraging or uplifting or perhaps going to propel us forward in any way. It's it's static and it's noisy and it's keeping us stationary and it's keeping us in fear and I just feel like when there's an opportunity to listen and to hear something that is from heaven, we need to do that. And so this space, I believe, is a platform where we can get together and hear a word from God and then take it into our everyday with courage and with conviction and with faith and walk that out um, no matter what our circumstances look like amen amen okay so hello from to the australian friends and we've got people watching from the wild coast and hello amy i see jody popped on thank you for your message i actually went off whatsapp if any of you guys have messaged me or been in contact with me while i've been away i really have not been on my phone we made a commitment to our kids that we were going to be fully present and it was brilliant. The mm. iPads have been put away. Mm. The phones have been ignored. Um, it's been a very, very crucial and special time for our family. So if you have been ignored, I am, I'm not going to apologize. It's very important that we had this moment with our kids, but I'll get back to you soon. Okay, so today what I want to do is um, just speak quickly, I feel, to something that I, I know you've heard before, but I want to remind us of in this season. And, um, and then I want to redo a little excerpt from my book. I said I promised you I was going to do this. Hello, Carol from Zimbabwe and all the girls jumping on. It's so nice to see you. But I promised you that I was going to read you a little bit of my book along the way. And then I'd love your feedback. And then hopefully we can come up with the title. But um, the good news is, is I think I finished my first draft, huh? And um, I just am on the sort of road to figuring out how to finish it. So I'm gonna share bits with you along the way, but today I wanted to just, um, I wanted to just talk about gathering. It was actually so funny that I was, you know, I've been away and I had this whole plan in mind of what I was gonna do on Tea With Taste for this month and, you know, things I was going to share with you and there's some projects that are coming up that I got excited about and I just yesterday I just felt God speak to me very clearly I've been running these little trails in the Midlands and the little place we're staying and I just really felt him impress upon my heart um this this word gather and you you know I've spoken about this many times the importance of gathering you know that I am very passionate about that scripture that says um, when we gather, when the people of God gather together side by side, something wonderful is released. We are co-comforted and co-encouraged by one another's faith. It's in Romans, 12, Romans 1 verse 12, um, 11, I think. And I've always shared the scripture with you because I feel so passionately about the, what gathering does. And so along the way, as these lockdowns have progressed and we've been told as churches we can't gather, I have been oftentimes quite vocal about the damage I believe it's doing and I, nothing's changed. There is damage being done when the people of God can't gather because there's, there's an isolation that takes place, an isolation physically but also an isolation in our hearts and there's lots of nastiness that can go on in that space. I think shame likes to live in isolation. I believe um, uh, joy is crushed when we are isolated and so I'm very passionate about gathering. And right now in, in the whole of South Africa, I don't know where, where you're from, I see New Zealand, Kate, you're with us, I know Nat's from Oz, the Netherlands, I'm not sure you know, what your regulations are right now, but for us, we can't gather in person. And it has 
an effect. And so I just felt God really speak to me yesterday around this idea of gathering and the importance of making it happen for ourselves, even when we can't perhaps come to church in the traditional way that we know to do on our Sunday. We can't do that. It's illegal. So what we need to do now is get creative and figure out how do we gather in ways that are safe, how do we gather in ways that um, honor our leaders, but how do we gather? Because it's important. It's not, it's not should we gather, it's we have to gather in ways that are safe and honoring of the rules and regulations that have been put in place because we, we will not survive without community and without togetherness. And so the very fact that you're here this morning, I wanna high five you from where I'm at because the reality is what you've said is I'm gathered here, I'm gathering somewhere today. I'm showing up for something because I believe it's good for me and it is good for you and it's good for me. You know, I've hustled to get here this morning, not because I want you to see my face, because I know that when we gather together, something wonderful is being released and the screen is no barrier to that something wonderful. Can I get a very loud amen from you girls this morning? The screen is not a barrier to what God can do. It's not a barrier to what he can say. It's not a barrier to what he will release. And he tells us when we gather together, we are co-comforted and co-encouraged by one another's faith, by one another's faith, not just by Tessa's faith, by one another's faith. When you show up and you start writing stuff down, you comment, you encourage, you, you commit to pray for people, you, you show up as yourself on this platform. What you're doing is you're encouraging and comforting my soul in Jesus' name. And I receive that as a promise from within scripture. And it's a promise for you too. And so I just want to say to you that gathering is not, you know, if and should we, if that's not the conversation I believe we need to be having. It's how are we going together? How are we going to keep prioritizing something that is crucial in this season? It's crucial. It's crucial to your health. It's crucial to you making it through in this season strong and coming on on the other side whole and full of faith and perhaps courage for whatever comes ahead. And so we're here this morning and we're believing that God is going to move us forward together as we gather because that's who he is. He's, he's, he's a promise keeper. And so I just want to take you back to a scripture you've heard a million times, a million times. And I want to read it to you, but I want to ask you to hear this scripture in a way that's not you must do this like God is God of rules and he just, you know, tells us what to do all the time. I want you to hear it from the heart of a father who loves us and knows what's good for us and wants to keep us safe and protected even when the storms rage around us. I want you to hear it from that lens. Now, it's from the book of Hebrews. It's from Hebrews 10 verse 20. A three. I'm going to start reading from there. You've heard this before, but I want to hear it in a new way. The book of Hebrews is, is basically a writer who I believe it's been taught in a way that is admonishing, which means, you know, um, to tell us what to do, to reprimand us, to keep us in line. Often, often I believe Hebrews is taught in that way, but actually Hebrews is a book about uh, the sonship and the daughtership. Of, of who we are in Christ, reminding us that, setting us on a solid foundation. And what this writer does throughout the book is so beautiful. He implores us to persevere because he is very um, elaborate in his description of the fact that we will face things in our life that will be difficult. And they are for our betterment if we will endure. And there's an opportunity for all of us to partner with the heart of God in endurance. And I love it. The book of Hebrews, it's challenging and it's uncomfortable in certain ways, but it's not admonishing. It's not, you know, a rule-making dad giving us the things that we have to do because that's who he is. He's a headmaster type figure. No, he's a father who loves and protects, wants to come alongside his children and cheer us on as we persevere through the things in life that actually have the ability and power to shape something beautiful within us if we would endure to the end. And so I want to read to you from verse 23 in chapter 10. It said, let us, us, let me, let you, 
there's an us in this. There's a we're together in this. We're going somewhere beautiful. And yes, it's uncomfortable. And yes, it's hard. And yes, we don't always like what we have to do. But we are going somewhere together. Let us hold unswervingly. In the Greek, if you unpack that word hold, it's the word possess, seize, to keep in our memory. It's there's a there's like a um, almost like a um a brute strength to these words to to possess to seize let's hold unswervingly let's possess it let's seize let's keep in our memory the hope to the hope that we profess to the profession of our faith to Jesus Christ himself. So when we, when we profess Jesus as Lord and Savior, that's a profession of our faith. We've seen that he is Lord. We've seen that he is Savior. We acknowledge who he is. That's the profession of our faith. And so what we do, we possess that. We seize that. We allow that to shape all that we are and all that we believe and all that we are becoming. For he who promised, I want you to hear this morning, for he who promised is faithful. I've said this, Many times on this platform, God is first and foremost faithful to himself. He's a promise keeper and he is so faithful to himself that when he says something, he cannot go back on his word. Thank, thank the good Lord that it's not about you and I keeping our promises because we are so fleeting and futile in this regard. But God is a promise keeper and he's first and forth, for, first and foremost faithful to himself. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider, that word consider in the Greek, unpacked, is beautiful. It says, let us discover. Let's consider. Let's think about it. I want to encourage you in this moment in history to learn to think for yourself. Don't just listen to what comes in and go, oh, yeah, great. And then, you know, process that and let it shape your behavior. Think for yourself. Think about what you're thinking about. Become a person who weighs up what is put in front of her and then uses it and processes it in a way that shapes something beautiful and profound within you. Let's consider, let's discover how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Perhaps this week it would be a beautiful thing to do, to discover and consider and think about ways in which you can spur someone else on towards love and good deeds, towards the, the, the very thing that God has put inside of them, that God's spirit gift, that beautiful uh, treasure that is being offered to the world. Perhaps it's, it's an opportunity for us as we, as we walk through this moment in history to discover ways in which we can spur others on which we can cheer people on, which we can champion their faith, which we can champion their life, their purpose. Not giving up meeting together. Not giving up meeting together. Not giving up meeting together. There's a reason why he's put that in there. Because we need it to persevere. We need it. You need me. To persevere and I need you to persevere and so what do we do we find ways in which we can gather so that we can persevere and endure to the end in the season the meeting together there that he's talking about is not a coffee you know date with your friend where you just talk about what's happening in your backyard that unpacked is the assembly this the assembly of God's people in worship so we're being asked to consider ways that we can spur others on and then not give up gathering in the assembly of worship. How are you doing that in this season when we can't gather? When we, when we offer you church online and it's there on a Sunday morning, are you ready and present to interact and engage with what God has placed before us in, 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 the, in what we know to be church in this moment? Or are we frying bacon and eggs while it's in the background hoping that God will meet us as we flippantly just go about our Sunday on autopilot because, well, I couldn't, I can't go to church, so let me just, you know, do what I need to do in the morning, and maybe I'll catch it later if I'm, if I can, because it doesn't work. It doesn't work to flippantly have church on in the background while we 
talk to our husbands or trying to engage our children. What it looks like for me in this season, when I'm not at church doing the things on a Sunday that arrive in your home, what it looks like for me is I facilitate church for my family. I do that. I set the tone. I get dressed. I put it on loudly. It's louder than their conversations. It's louder than their noise. It's louder than their bad attitudes because this is a church moment. And I suppose what I'm asking us to do is just consider the way that we, we continue together in this season. What does that look like? And not because it's admonishing. It's like, you have to do this because, you know, that's what you have to do. It's because actually it's important and you need it. And so, um, again, it says, you know, don't give up meeting together as someone in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So there's again, he says it again, encourage one another. So I think for me, it's, I've looked at the scripture again with new eyes and gone, you know, there's a mandate. There's actually a, not a mandate. Well, there is a mandate, I think, for the church to continue together. It's, you know, it's a call of God to just, keep showing up in, in every season, but there's also this invitation to persevere, to actually look at what it means to endure in this season. And for me, when I read the scripture, when I take hold of all the things it's saying, there's two things that jump out, gather and encourage, gather and encourage. And that will build endurance and perseverance in me. I'm like, whoa, okay, well, I can do that. I can persevere. I can gather. And no, it doesn't look the same. And no, it's not comfortable. And no, it isn't always easy and straightforward. But it's important. And as the leader of our home, as well as a leader in our home, you know, my husband and I lead together in our home. We, we are, we are co-parenting. I have the privilege and power an authority to shape how we do that by setting the tone for it, by placing it at, you know, it, its priority above other things. And so I've been saying to people in the season, and so I want to say to you now, I want to encourage you to get dressed on a Sunday. You wouldn't arrive at church in your pajamas. Well, you might, but I wouldn't know. I've never seen you in church in your pajamas. But we wouldn't arrive at church in our pajamas with our hair unbrushed and our teeth smelling bad. We wouldn't, we wouldn't bring our eggs and bacon into the auditorium and fry them on a scuttle while the preacher carried on. You know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't talk about the rugby game last night during worship. So why is it different in our homes? Why have we become um, complacent in the way that we gather in our homes? I feel like this is a moment that we can shape something. We are the ecclesia. We gather. We are people of the way. We know how to do this. So why would it look different in our homes just because it's on a TV screen? I think perhaps we're missing something in this moment by just doing things like we've always done them. And because it's not in church, oh, well, it's not the same. It is the same. It is the same. The Spirit of God is still alive, breathing, living and active, meeting you, on your screen. Amen? Through your screen. He really is. He is no respecter or perhaps um, he is no, he's not intimidated by this moment. He's showing up for it and I want to encourage us to show up for it too. And it may take you being the courageous one in your home to just call the family to attention and say, you know, girls, uh, family, whoever it is that you have in your home, I think it's time that we do this differently because God has something to say and worship makes us strong and releases joy. And when we gather, we are co-encouraged and, and, and comforted by one another's faith. And what we're doing is we're not engaging this moment, hoping that we're going to come through strong on the other side. It's not going to happen. And so I just feel that God is I believe stirring in me personally a greater conviction around what it means to truly be the church, to gather in and out of season. And I personally am not afraid of this moment. I know God is not surprised by it. And I love how you said, Nat, in your 
T with Tess two weeks ago, you said you, there are no dead ends in God. And, you know, we've seen this sometimes subconsciously. We see this moment, you know, the church can't open as a dead end. It's not a dead end. It's an opportunity to persevere and grow and become strong in ourselves without just being fed an experience in a room that can carry us, which is an amazing thing when we don't have the strength. But sometimes we can just allow ourselves to get swept up in the current and the excitement of the moment. And we don't actually fully engage what God is wanting to do in and through us personally each week. And we allow Sunday to be a well, one moment thing. And then we forget about what it looks like to journey with Jesus every day. And I'm just, I'm just asking the question, what would it look like to be intentional and do it differently? And to show up. To truly show up as the church in our homes, believing that God will do what he wants to do. Even through a screen. Who knew? And I'm here for it. I am here for it. Anyway, I think um I, I think I'm I'm just going all over the show actually, but you know, there was a beautiful moment. This actually, oh my goodness, I nearly missed the whole crux of the story. <laughs> but this, there was a moment we were at a little restaurant uh, when they were open, um, up in the Central Berg, before we came to the Midlands. And um, there was this amazing moment where I recognized a group of women that I knew growing up who would go away together. Um, I think they go away once a year. They like do a big trip and it's an amazing thing. And they've obviously journeyed friendship over many, many years. And so there was this table of women that I recognized. You know, the, the table is smaller now. Um, I think some of some of the, the women may have passed away. Some of them may have moved on and immigrated. Some may, you know, they may have lost friendship perhaps. Some may not be um, able to be there. But there was this, this, woman, this group of women that I recognized who'd been doing this for many years. And they were engaged with one another. And they were talking. And they were present. And they were laughing and it just, you could just see the journey of life at the table and they were just present in the moment. And then next to them was this younger, much younger group of girls um, sitting and four of them on their phones. Um, and, you know, the, it can look like they're gathering, but they're not really. They re they're really just sitting there in their own little bubble at the table, isolated, looking at their phones. And I just I saw the contrast of the two pictures and I thought, you know what? In this season, it's very easy because we're so tech-oriented and we need it, like in this moment, it's so easy to just, you know, have the phone there. You, you're together, but you're not really because, you know you're not engaged fully and present in the moment. And yet there's this other picture of what it looks like to go on a journey of life, to persevere and, and to endure. And I don't know, I wanna be like the latter. I wanna be like the woman who know how to just show up in each other's lives year upon year, who know how to gather, who know what it means to stick around when it gets hard, who know what it means to be present, who, who understand that technology has a place, but right now this is not the moment for it. And, and I just, I just think this is key. Gathering is key. And we're, we're being told that we can't have large gatherings. So let's do that one way. Let, let's, let's do the, be in our homes and show up and, and do church well and be the church and all the things. And then on the other hand, when we have moments to gather in small pockets, which we are allowed to do, let's be present. Let's be those people that encourage one another because it says encouragement is gonna help us persevere. And that's what I want. Those, those two groups showed me what I want. And it was a great moment to just see, actually, I know, I know what is needed for this moment. The gathering, it's so crucial. And so we're going to gather corporately on now and we're going to do it well. We're going to show up. And then we're going to gather in smaller pockets in a safe way with people we know that are encouragement to our lives and to our faith, who we need for this journey, because that's what's going to build perseverance. And so I love that. I think it's super exciting. Oh my gosh, I'm running out of time. I don't think I can read you my book. Sorry, girls. Oh, I am sorry. I ran out of time. Next week, next week, I will read you a little part of the first chapter and then I'll give you an idea of what 
that's going to happen in there. But I just want to say thank you for showing up. It is never, ever lost on me that you would take a moment in your week, half an hour, to set aside this time to be together. And I want you to take hold of the promise from the one who is faithful that when we gather together, something wonderful is released and we are co-comforted and co-encouraged. And I know, I don't know where you're at right now, but I want you to know this to be true. If you are facing circumstances that are difficult, if you are, if you are struggling right now, courage and comfort are your portion and they are being released now as we meet. And you can take hold of them by the Spirit of God. Take hold of what you need for this season. You are not passed by. The Spirit of God is not passing you by in this moment. He's with us. He's with us. So well done. Well done for being here. You're amazing. I'm going to pray for you. And then I am going to... I will read this chapter on my little... What's it called? I'm um, Not the whole chapter. I'm going to read it. Go and read a bit now. And I'll save it to that um, little new Instagram that I made becoming the author Tess and you can if you want to go and listen to it you can put it there and I love you all thank you for all of you who've showed up Halsey I see you and um I really do love you all and I'm grateful for you and we're in this together and it's going to be okay okay thank you Jesus that as we gather here this morning what we receive by your mighty name is comfort and courage and we take hold of them in Jesus name and we go forward from this moment knowing that we have all that we need in you to face our circumstances, that we are not alone, and that together we have something very powerful. And so we thank you for the church. We thank you for her. She is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And it never, ever is lost on me, the beauty that is the church and that it is a gift. And you give it to us as, as, a, as, a, as just something precious to be a part of. And so... We thank you for you, God. We thank you for your church. We thank you for your people. And we ask that you will just continue to speak to us and love on us throughout the day. In Jesus' name, I love you girls. And I'm excited to see you again next week on Tila Tears. I'll be home and I won't be wearing a beanie because it'll be warmer. But I love you and I will see you soon.